So, Miha, I, I'll start with a story, which is how I met Miha, which was, um, I was in Boston, it was 2018, I still remember, we had the lunch, and I was like, okay, what is Celtra doing? And I started with the assumption of, oh, that's DCO, Dynamic Creative Optimization. And then Miha started to explain to me what the creative automation is. So he started to tell me about creative management platform, etc., etc. So that was Miha 2018, now it's 2024, so six years later, where is Celtra? Where is creative automation? What's the status of the industry there? First, uh, thank you very much um, you know, for uh, joining us today here and for having me. Uh, yeah, look, it's, uh, first of all, it's a very exciting time. You know, obviously, after many years, uh, us kind of talking about the, creative, uh, the importance of creative in, in advertising, uh, you know, AI finally kind of like you know, changed the, the interest level of the entire industry. And I think there's a huge, huge excitement that you know, with Gen AI, we can finally get to much more personalized, you know, creative and, and you know, um, something that will truly become the most significant lever for performance of advertising. But, you know, back to kind of where we started and, and where we are today. So, look at Celtra, we've been working with brands um, indirectly first, uh, you know, by providing creative technology to largest media platforms so they, um, you know, they could build... Uh, more engaging ads and, and offer more engaging formats. But then over time, we basically shifted over to advertisers. And obviously, like, you know, uh, for them, the challenge is, you know, how to really develop uh, creative that's more effective and also how to do this at scale uh, and to continuously, you know, optimize the process to make it more efficient and so on. So, you know, our vision back then when we started talking about was to really offer a platform, uh, offer uh, advertisers a platform on which uh, they could centralize creative production, and so we started, uh, we started really educating the market at going modular. So modular design is the way to scale creative, like building central toolkits and then um, activating toolkits in the markets, and you know automate that as much as possible. So this is what we've been doing the last three years, um, and yes, we're seeing. Uh, great results with some of the largest advertisers in the world. Thank you, Mira. And so, if I'm following, so what you're saying is we start with creative automation when it comes to production and adaptation and scaling. So, as a, an ex-brand, so I put my hat on, so the next step is like media. So, my understanding is, as of today, still the two teams are very separate. So, you have uh, creative teams that have different KPIs, different budgets, different agencies, different technologies, and then you have media teams, again, completely separate. So my question is, uh, how is Celtra thinking about uh, bridging the gap there, so media and creative together? Yes, um, I mean, this is the challenge that we are trying to solve, uh, really, you know, bring all these personas on one platform. So from, you know, creative production people and designers to, you know, also, uh, creative ops people who are actually setting up uh, creative for campaigns, and then also media people who obviously are interested in, you know, getting out better performance. So, you know, the platform really allows all these personas to collaborate. Uh, now, um, what's the most important part uh, is that creative automation integrates with media platforms. And we have also built extensions uh, with APIs so that developers can actually, you know, integrate the output from creative automation into any you know, distribution channel. And with that, we also get uh, the media performance data back and we also get uh, the insights from you know, uh, creatives that ran in the past. And so that is the key link. So bringing uh, insights and, and, and campaign performance data back into the production platform and that starts informing the production process. And so this is the step towards you know, just using data to build uh, better toolkits, to, to actually build better versions, uh, and you know, eventually uh, to automate the optimization, uh, the optimization process. Okay, thank you. So Mika, let, let me play it back just to make sure that I got what's gonna happen here. So what you're saying is you produce all your assets in Celtra, so you will have all the data related to the creative assets. Then you can distribute across all the different media channels, so basically you have all the data there on which creative is going where, 
then you run the campaign, so you're actually buying media, and then you mention through API you get the data back, so it means that you get back all the media data. So how do you say that in Celtra you can get basically creative data, media data, sounds like a lot of data, which is good, and it looks like an area that is prone for disruption when it comes to AI, so everybody's talking about AI, so I'm just curious, what are you gonna do with all this data? Is AI a topic that you're exploring? How you look about AI in the space of creative tech? Yes, correct. Look, first of all, using one platform to, to um, create toolkits and then to scale from toolkits, the first benefit is it really gives you an oversight of the creative process. It gives you an oversight on, you know, of on everything that is basically created from these toolkits and you know, how the content is used as well as you know, once campaigns run, you can get back the performance data. So in just having this complete oversight from a creative standpoint, you know, what is actually working and what's not working, what's being utilized is uh, you know, a game changer. That's something that you know, uh, even the largest brands in the world currently uh, don't have. So um, now how to use AI. So how we use AI is, and, and this is really um, you know, the, the first, the first uh, uh, capabilities that we enabled on the platform um, were basically just automating elements of creative. So, you know, bringing in AI models uh, to, to, to create like text, you know, for translations, um, it, it, like just creating different versions of, of copy, and then also images, right? So that is, that was kind of low hanging fruit and, you know, we're just seeing across the board that all the applications, all the SaaS platforms, they're trying to use these models, bring them in, so that certain elements, you know, can be basically enhanced and, and, and automated. Now, the second step for us, which is, you know, uh, I would say the innovation we bring into this space is that, um, you know, we're using models to actually look for uh, similar creatives that ran in the past and then also expose all the context around the performance of those creatives. So we know exactly, you know, first of all, like context in which they ran, like what was the campaign, the targeting, the objective, like, you know, how big, uh, and then also the performance. And then, you know, to bring this insight into the creative process where you can actually, you know, start, um, you know, making decisions based on, you know, what works and, and, and what doesn't. So uh, that is really like the first stage for us towards, you know, uh, automating the optimization cycle. And from there on, recommendations, creative scoring, you know, ultimately, you know, these steps will lead to like fairly autonomous optimization. So um, one other important thing I would like to say, look, we, we are, um, you know, big believers that AI models will continue to evolve very rapidly. And, you know, no matter how fast we will get to, to AGI, uh, there will be an inherent need uh, for um, a human input and also for human control. We believe that, like you know, uh, that this is something that, you know, that will that that you know brands will will look for, like even you know five years out, because um, you know if not, then obviously everything can be just a black box, and so you know creative automation is really you know our vision is to build a platform into which these models can you know can plug in, but at the same time we provide advertisers the ability to understand you know how these building blocks come together optimize the process you know really kind of collapse you know some steps in this process which is way too complicated you know and and make it much faster so that you know creators can more directly kind of like um, connect to let's say media operators um, and with that you know I think um, we'll see a significant improvement in um, you know just in performance Last question, bonus question for me here. So question is, um, I was at PNG, branding campaign, awareness campaigns was, I would say, majority of the spend. Then right now I'm at Uber Eats, and uh, I would say there is a lot of uh, performance activities. So curiosity is, uh, when you think of creative automation and everything we discuss, so advertising, creative automation, and media and data, is it something that is more focused on awareness campaigns, on performance campaigns, both of them, so is it full funnel? So how should we think about that in terms of uh, how marketing spend their money? Look, I think we will see the use of AI um, in, in both areas. Like obviously uh, in performance, uh, the optimization, you know, just using models to, to figure out certain things that we couldn't, we just like simply tagging elements 
uh, of the creative now with you know the ability to really kind of in ingest all this data into models and get out um, insights that we were not before like that certainly um, is um, is something that's already happening today and I think like all the big media platforms even before like the you know this became a hype um, you know we've seen this in performance like you just upload assets and you know the the model figures out like what works best and when the you know performance is decaying and then kind of like suggest something new and so on um, I think it's a bigger challenge for you know when you think about like the top-down um, you know how do how do brands kind of like preserve the the narrative the control uh, the unique the uniqueness also like how do how do they ingest you know that human element that that will that will provide differentiation you know um, and so uh, again our you know uh, view here is that um, you know first of all like the the process when you think about the creative process and how creative comes into media uh, it's still too complex. You know, there are many steps. I mean, it's obviously start with a big, you know, creative idea. Then you, you know, uh, then it's designers. Then you have creative strategies that kind of like bridge over to the media. Then you have the creative ops people. And so before like something goes through all these steps, um, you know, it just like unfortunately at the end, like oftentimes it's too complex for for something to happen. So you know, people just do the easy stuff. So I think that. You know, AI is perfectly suited to kind of like just collapse this together, and and so that you know uh, that instead of like five steps, we can get this down to like you know one or two, um, and so um, so that's the first big game changer. And then you know, secondly, I think really connecting media and and, and creative, you know, so that uh, that you know the the basically like data will come together uh, and everything becomes very actionable. Uh, instantaneously like that's going to be you know the the you know the big probably like change in the upside that we're trying to deliver so. no, I love it because basically my understanding after this chat is there is an integration that is happening horizontally so from creative to media but what you're saying is also vertically so from awareness to lower funnel that's where basically data can be the connective tissue and then Celtra can facilitate all that process yeah absolutely I think you know that um, you know, upper funnel, lower funnel, like that's already happening um, and was happening, you know, even prior to, to you know, to the, to this renaissance of, of AI. Um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, every campaign uh, needs to kind of like, you know, uh, needs to show, you know, that uh, there's like measurable, you know, tangible uh, performance and, and with like all these, all these technologies that are available today, I think everything's going to become you know, way more measurable and, and, and with that also like, you know, continuously optimized. So, yes. Thank you, Miha. Thank you very much.